Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next day. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Reading rainbow I can go anywhere Friends to know And ways to grow Reading rainbow I can be anything Take a look It's in Amazing. I mean, look at all of the fun and interesting things we know how to do. And what's most impressive is that every single one of these skills was learned. Once you know how to do something, it seems easy, but getting there, or getting good, is always a real challenge. Nice. Thank you. Just because a thing is difficult doesn't mean you shouldn't learn it. In fact, according to Mr. George Baker, you shouldn't let anything stand in your way, not even a hundred years. His story is in this book called Mr. George Baker. Mr. George Baker, written by Amy Hess, illustrated by John J. Mood, read by Wayne Brady. See this man? This one here, sitting on the porch? <laughs> That's Mr. George Baker. And he's a hundred years old. No kidding. Hurry up, Harry. Mr. Harry in charge? That's George, all snappy and happy in the morning. He always calls, hurry up, Harry, when I'm crossing lawns. His and mine. And he's always there first, waiting on the porch. See this man? This one here, zipping up his book bag? His book bag is red like mine, and there's a book inside. But George can't read. Wow. A hundred years old, and he never learned how. Hmm. That must be corrected, says George. I really like his sweater, all hangy with three buttons. It's chilly in the morning, and we both hug our knees. We wait, watching leaves blow off trees. They fly for a while, they float, they tumble for a while, they swoop. Now the screen door creaks. And you know who teeters out? Mrs. Baker. And some people say she's 90. Well, here you are, Harry, looking after my George. Mrs. Baker puts a sack on the step beside George, and there's lunch in the sack for later. For the man I love, says Mrs. Baker. <laughs> Why, Mrs. B, you flatter me. George gets up, all crookedy and slow, and the next thing you know, they're dancing. <laughs> Then, Mrs. Baker gives a wave and a wink. 
Goodbye, she says. Be good, she says. And goes on back in the house with purple shutters. George Baker and me, <laughs> George Baker and I, we sit on the step and wait. Side by side, we wait. See these crookedy fingers going on his knees? They fly across his knees. Tappity boom, tappity tap, tap, boom, tappity boom, boom tap. George Baker is a drummer man, and some people say he's famous. George gets up real slow. I take his hand, and he takes mine, and we shuffle down the walk to the big school bus. Morning, says the driver. We've been waiting, answers George. There are 22 kids on the bus, plus four grown-ups on the bus. They all want George. Over here, they cry. Sit here, they say. Mm-mm-mm, but George sits with me each and every day. See this man, this one in room seven? That's Mr. George Baker, and he's a 100 years old. No kidding. He's learning to read with the grown-ups in room seven. And my room is right down the hall. I'm learning too, and it's hard. We can do it, says George after school. Our books are green, and his lips sound out the letters real slow. But his fingers fly across his knees like a big old drum. Mr. George Baker, the famous Tappity Boom drummer, wasn't really 100 years old. Nope, not at all. He was 100 years young. He viewed every day of his life as a new beginning. His age didn't matter. His determination did. People are never too old to learn. In fact, some people, like Mr. George Baker, make learning a lifelong adventure that keeps them young and kicking. Meet the Steppers, a dance group of seniors between the ages of 59 me, and 87 years old. Oh, no, we're just going to do our exercises right now, OK? Their leader is Barbara Taylor, a former school principal and lifelong dancer. I think that what we'll do is because that ending is important. I'm Barbara Taylor, and I'm 82. I'm going to be 83 New Year's Day. Many of the steppers had never danced before joining the group, but they wanted to learn something new. I got involved with the steppers by invitation of the founder. I went in 1998, and I've been there ever since. They didn't let me go. <laughs> a little bit lower. I think in many ways the dance and the movement is uh, life-giving. It makes you get up in the morning, take your shower, Fix your hair, fix your nails, put on your stuff, and get out and present yourself to the world. And so they find that they can use muscles that they didn't think they could use anymore. I worked your faces so you have a little smile. I became part of the Steppers the year my husband died gave me, I can't tell you how much joy and love, and um, gave me a life. Good to see you. We all love each other. You wasn't there. And um, we learn from one another. I'm watching you now. Got it? I'm watching for the timing. I'm watching for their movement, ways that we can improve, especially according to the particular dance that we're doing. 
Get your hands relaxing first, not too. We may be women with years, but we can gain a measure of perfection, so to speak. You know what? You lost it. I think you lost it. When I'm doing choreography and trying to come up with something new, I play the music a lot. And I may be playing the music while I'm in the kitchen cooking and dreaming up what I'm gonna do to it. And then I'll go in and concentrate on putting movement to the music. That's where you really learn something maybe you did not know. Well, let's, shall we try that one again? Is that one? Let's try that one again. Go back and come back. Come on. One. Come on. We have to do it over and over and over and over and over. You want me to sing? <laughs> We don't remember as well, and, and it can be a dance we've done 50 times. If we don't practice it, I personally will forget a little bit. And you get on the back row so you can see. We're leaving out a whole movement, but you'll get the rhythm, I think. Even seniors who are disabled are included in the steppers. <laughs> Evelyn has been an inspiration to all of us. She is game to get up and try anything. Oh, Lord. When the women had gone through working with some brand new music a couple of times and we're getting ready to do it as a final run. All right, ladies. We're going to put Evelyn on the back row for this time. And I didn't know whether she was going to be able to catch on that quickly. She got up there just like a real trooper. And I was just, I felt like doing a shout in the middle of the floor. say about old people can learn, they just didn't meet the steppers. You got 60 old people and 70 old and a lot of them are 80. Oh, it's been marvelous. Marvelous. Yes. It's just a joy to see how so many of the women have developed. Oh, is it she? I don't mean just developed as dancers, but developed as people. They are more caring for one another. All right. A certain amount of community has been built. She got the That's a weird looking. That is a Well, it's not. It's unusual. It is. The performance will be Friday. Uh, July 30th. When we get together and really do a great show, we come away thrilled. The first, the first numbers every day. Yeah. Yeah. So you're leading in on one line. Oh, I love it. It's just like Academy Award night <laughs> for me. I don't know about nobody else, but I am at my best. If you turn on the music, put me in the spotlight, I will perform for you, period. Hit it, maestro. The audience gives us a real lift. We have audiences that, that just make you dance. They are so appreciative of what you're giving.
I just feel good and great when I can get up and get before an audience and, and just let it rip. I feel that I'm bringing some joy and happiness to somebody else. I'm a great-grandmother, and I want my great-grandchildren to know that as long as we live, we can still learn, develop, and grow. You know, now that I think about it, there are a lot of things that I haven't learned that I'd still like to know how to do, like learn Italian, or tap dance, or, or even take Tai Chi. I've always wanted to learn how to take Tai Chi. How about you? Is there anything that you'd still like to learn? I really want to learn how to scuba dive because I think it would be cool to like go underwater and be able to breathe and see all the fish. Like a doctor would ever like to do surgery. How to make new inventions so the world would be better. I'm tough because I have four brothers and I want to learn how to put football. I'd like to learn how to build a car. How to sail. Skydiving. Play the piano. I wanted to learn baseball. I want to be really good at math. Play the piano. But uh, I don't know if it's too late now or not, but as long as there's life, there's hope, right? <coughs> Learn how to act. I'd love to captain a ship. I'd like to drive a car. Learn how to love more. I would like to learn how to do cool yo-yo tricks. I want to learn how to do gymnastics so I can go to the Olympics. I'd like to go in orbit around the Earth. <laughs> No matter what it is you set out to learn, it helps to have a good teacher. And the best teachers are those with lots of experience. Now, that usually means someone who's older, someone who's done it, him or herself, lots of times and is ready to pass on their knowledge to someone like me or you. When Alfie Lapori was a child, his father taught him how to bake. Now, Alfie's the teacher passing his knowledge on to his grandchildren. Yours is going to come out much quicker. You can tell because you can feel the pastry bag in your hand. Alfie's family has been baking for five generations. For 100 years, they've owned Ferrara's Bakery in the heart of New York City's Little Italy. Been a family business at the same location since 1892. I am a direct descendant and third generation. There is now my nephew and my daughter behind me. And then they've got a group of little ones. Alfie's daughter, Gabriella, started working here as a little girl. What time's the second shift coming? It's all one big family job. Whatever needs to get done gets taken care of. Everyone in the family participates in the business, including the kids. And they start very young. When you come to Ferraris the first time, it probably seems a little bit busy. In the back is a bakery, and they make all the pastries. Ernest, Alfie's nephew, is in charge of the kitchens. He bakes everything in the Ferrara tradition. This is a family recipe. My mother worked on this for many years at home, coming up with a recipe. And we were guinea pigs for many years, tasting them. She was in search of making the perfect New York cheesecake. I find it very hard telling the difference between the Ferrara cheesecake made at Ferrara and the cheesecake made in my mother's house. Delicious. The best. You got to just try to stay even with the top of the tart. Just going around. Alfie loves to share the skills he's learned with his grandchildren, and they eagerly devour whatever he says, as well as the pastries. You didn't get any fruit. You could start with the kiwi, kiwi right in the center. My father teaches these kids the basics, you know, consistency, quality, presentation. Let it always be the same. These go into the display case, long ways. So you want them to face so the customer can see them. Oh. Let's see you do it. To see my father in the bake shop with 
my kids, putting that last touch on it and being proud to put it in the pastry cup and bring it out. He gets so excited to see that this business could survive another 30, 40, 50 years. How do they look? They look good enough to eat to me. Good. Do they look good enough to buy? Yes. yes. That's what's important. Because we're here not only eat, we're here to sell. I would love to see my daughter's children follow in this business. I don't know how likely that is. You're talking going deep into fifth generation. You'll be at 130 years at least by that time. And he's going to pull it down once, twice, three times, or just two times. He loves to be with children. And he gets to interact with them. And he shows them that, yes, I'm going to work, but I do something that I love to do. Pop with your left, pick up with your right. And when he makes work fun, the kids understand work should be fun. This way, one hand always is clean. It's nice when we see him. Like, we never knew how to do those and what they were. We, like, dunked them in the chocolate and then just put them in and designed them. And we didn't know how to do those. You can stay higher. That's it. That's it. Okay, here's how we fill it. I'm gonna reach over and show you on a larger one. We go in and we squeeze, move the bag out and the shell out the opposite way. Try with this bag. You can let this sit. That's probably stuck right in the mouth. That's great. That one's great. Learning the family business means more than just baking. It also means eating. You know, the kids get to test lots of different recipes and help decide on new flavors. We have a, a new gelati here. It's called straccia della. What do you like about it? I like it because you get a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of vanilla. Raise your hand if you think we should keep both flavors. My dad always told us, if a child did not eat it, don't bother making it, because it'll never be a success. If a child doesn't like it. How much you live here? That any family has been doing something for 113 years and always manages to find the next person, the next generation, who takes up and carries the torch. I I'm very proud of that. You can take your fingers in it. It looks like the Ferrara family be making sweet treats for other families for the next 100 years. I think I will want to work here one day. You like coming down and yes. work? Yeah, very much. Because I'm already working here a little bit. <laughs> How about you, George? Wow, yeah! This is wonderful. You know, of all the skills you'll ever learn, the most useful is probably reading. It takes a lot of time, determination, and a lot of hard work, but once you know how, it's your ticket to knowledge. So here are three books that'll make you glad that you learned how to read, but you don't have to take my word for it. Hi, my name is Brandon Bennett. Did you ever read The Music in Derek's Heart? Well, I did. The first part is when Derek saw a slim person bobbing his head side to side. It was Uncle Booker T. He practiced the harmonica with Derek. He gave Derek the harmonica. Every time he practiced, he said, do I have the feeling now? Uncle Booker T said, slow down. One day, Uncle Booker T's hand grew weary and he had arthritis. It was painful. Derek knew what would cheer up his uncle. He played soft and smooth. Then Uncle Booker T said, Yes, you've got it. It's perfect, it's perfect. The best part in the book was when Derek had got the feel of the harmonica. On a scale of one to 10, I rate this book a 10. I'm Joshua, and I just finished reading Grandfather Counts. It starts by the grandfather coming from China to visit his family. He starts talking to the family in Chinese, but they don't understand what he's saying. They can't communicate. Uh, they feel kind of sad. 
when they could communicate more. Well, I think they were really happy. This book was fantastic. It was very interesting. It encouraged me to communicate with my grandma better because she could only speak Russian. I think this is a very good book and this end might be very surprising. Hi, I'm Emma, and I just read a book, A Bird About to Sing. It's about this girl named Natalie, and she loved to write poetry, but she didn't feel that she could read it to anyone. One day, her teacher brought her to a poetry reading, and everyone read their poems, but when it was her turn, she stood there and she couldn't do it. On the way home on the bus, she whispered to her teacher that she wanted to read her poem. And when she was done with it, she figured out that everyone else on the bus was from the poetry reading, and they listened to her. After that, she felt like she could read it to people then. The author really showed how Natalie felt about her fear. She was like a bird that lost her voice, and when she read her poems, it was like she got her voice back. So that's why it's called A Bird About to Sing. If you were to read one book this year, this would be a very good one to read. When you're a kid, it's hard to imagine that you'll ever grow up and get old. <laughs> but you gotta trust me on this one. You will. Besides, it's not how many years you live, it's how many years you learn. You see, there's always something new to discover whether you're one or 100. So, why not learn to make learning a part of your life, hmm? I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Mr. George Baker by Amy Hest, illustrated by John J. Muth, published by Candlewick Press. The Music in Derek's Heart by Gwendolyn Battle Avert, illustrated by Colin Bootman, published by Holiday House. Grandfather Counts by Andrea Cheng, illustrated by Anji Zhang, published by Lian Lo Books Incorporated. A Bird About to Sing, written and illustrated by Laura Nyman Montenegro, published by Houghton Mifflin Company. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library, where you can borrow a book and return it on your next day. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.